So it starts in verse 1, and Jesus tells it, tells it, tells it. Let's just pick it up in verse 8. You know, know the story. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now listen to verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Jesus said, point number one, it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. They said, why do you speak parables? And this parable is the first one that was told about the sower. He said, it's given to you to know the mysteries of of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that which he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So Jesus said, point number one, mysteries of the kingdom is for people who are prepared to see and hear. He says, but they can't see the mysteries or hear the mysteries, so they will be seeing, but won't see. They will be hearing, but won't hear. Verse 14, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. For these, this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. Now listen to the Amplified, verse 15. For this nation's heart has grown gross, and he says in brackets, fat and full. Their ears heavy and difficult of hearing. Their eyes have they tightly closed, lest they see and perceive in their eyes. Listen to this. Jesus said, they have closed their eyes tightly, they don't want to see. They have stopped their ears. They don't want to hear. So in seeing, they will not see. In hearing, they will not hear. Because their hearts are so fat and full, they can't see and they can't hear. That's why it's going to be a mystery to them. They will not understand the kingdom. Jesus is talking about the sower. Verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets... And righteous men, verse 17 is an awesome scripture, have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear therefore the parable of the sower. When one heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it, not then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which he have heard. It says, the sower that sows the word is the word of the kingdom. Amen. But people would hear and not hear. So he says, many people of the prophets of old long to see what you are seeing, long to hear what you are hearing, are putting emphasis on it over and over and over and over again. So the word of the kingdom is... So the word of the kingdom, which Jesus tried to explain in the parable of the sower, is you got to be able to see and hear. And that will be when you do and speak. And that will be because you've got the word and the spirit. How many want to know the mysteries of the kingdom? So your hearts must not be fat and full and think you know it all. That's why Israel missed it. They thought they know it all. And Jesus came like a thief in the night. 2,000 years ago, took the kingdom and they didn't even know he was there. 2,000 years later, they still do not know he already came. 
He already came as the Savior of the world. He already came to redeem mankind from sin and unrighteousness. And the people that He came to, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. Because their hearts were full. Oh, we've got it. We know all the law and the prophets. And the Bible says, the prophets love to see what you're seeing, love to hear what you're hearing, but they couldn't see it and they couldn't hear it. So blessed are you because you see and hear. But they can't see and they can't hear. So to see, somebody's got to do. And to hear, somebody's got to speak. Amen. So you speak the word and you do by the Spirit. Amen. So let's go to Jesus' life story and pick it up from where he was filled with the Holy Ghost. In Luke chapter 3. Luke 3. Now when all the people were baptized, and Jesus also being baptized, and while he was still praying, the visible heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, my beloved, and you are well pleased. 4 verse 1. Then Jesus, full of and controlled by the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan as was led by the Holy Spirit. Verse 14. Then Jesus went back full of and under the power of the Holy Spirit unto Galilee. And the fame of him spread throughout all the whole region round and about. Verse 18. And Jesus walked into the synagogue and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. To preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind. To send forth as delivered those who are oppressed. Who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed and broken down by calamity. To preach the acceptable here of the Lord. Jesus was baptized. Now we're going to bring it all to you tonight. He was baptized and then he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost descended upon him when he came up out of the water of baptism. The Holy Ghost came upon him and he was anointed. And by the Spirit, he went into the desert and he came back, Luke 4 verse 1. He came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he came into the synagogue and he said, the Spirit of the Lord. Come on. He said, the the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel and to bring deliverance, healing, So the Holy Spirit empowers a person to speak and do. Jesus was anointed to speak and do. The word of the kingdom is there must be speaking and doing. If there's no proof, how can you prove the ruling? So it's not just in teaching, it's in teaching and showing. It's in speaking and doing. It's the Spirit and the Word. So let's look at the proof in verse 31. And he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day. This is still in Luke chapter 4. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Now how could they say his word was with power? Because in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, you Jesus of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round and about. So they said, they said, his word is with power. So he was teaching in their synagogues. And while he was teaching, there came demon possessed and sick people. So they said, when he's teaching, we see the miracles. So it's not just in teaching and preaching. Every time Jesus taught, he also did. And every time Jesus did, he also taught. So there was a double-sided sword coming to them with spirit and word, with doing and speaking, with teaching and performing. 
You know, so they said, what manner of man is this? So they were amazed because his word was with power. So as he taught and the demon possessed was there, he just spoke with authority. Was it just speaking in authority to the demon or speaking in authority while he was teaching? So let's look at the life of Jesus. Turn around in Acts chapter or Luke. Sorry, let's get, just run through the book of Luke. Luke 5, just turn around. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, now I trust you're going to run with me, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, Amen. he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. So what was Jesus doing there? He was ready to teach them. Amen. So they pressed upon him to do what? To hear. They said, teach us, yeah. teach us. And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would th th thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Was it the word that Jesus said, put the net on the other side? Or was it because they sat there for an hour or two and they listened as he was teaching? After the teaching, Peter said, man, after this teaching, I'll throw out every net. Come on, we're going to push it till we get it tonight. They pressed upon him to hear the word. So he got into the ship, took a little from the shore, sat in the ship and taught them. When he finished, he said, now, Peter, just throw out the net. He said, Lord, we've toiled all night. But you, after this teaching, I wish I had 20 nets. Come on, somebody's got to get it tonight, and the people that's going to get it is going to see power like they never saw before in their lives. Look at verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, some men were bringing on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. That sounds better, amplified. And they tried to carry him in and lay him before Jesus. Verse 19, and when they could find no place, remember, they broke out the roof and they dropped him. Verse 20, and when he saw their faith, he said unto the, to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And then the Pharisees were upset. They said, you can't do this. Verse 24, but he said to the man, he said, that you may know that the Son of Man has power upon earth to forgive sins. I say unto you, rise, take up your bed and go to your home. And immediately arose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God. And they were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. So some people were filled with fear. Some people were filled with joy. And some people were amazed. But when Jesus taught, the very thing that was released in the spirit realm was power to heal the sick. So when Jesus taught, and after the teaching, he said, now put out your net. Peter said, why didn't we add more nets? Why didn't we add more boats? So teaching under the Holy Ghost brings forth power. But power will produce teaching. Chapter 6, verse 6. And it came to pass that he entered into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was with it. And the scribes and the Pharisees, come on, every chapter, scribes and Pharisees, scribes and Pharisees. This is the religious crowd. They watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up, stand forth in the midst. That was the same with the man that was dropped from the roof. He rose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? Jesus was teaching. While he was teaching, he said, is it right to do? Or is it right not to do? 
That is the question. To do or not to do. After this teaching, shall we do or shall we not do? And looking round about them, he said, stretch forth your hand. He did so and his hand was restored. And they were filled with madness. And communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. That's more or less where we started. Jesus spoke to the Pharisees. And he told them a parable of the sower. And he said, a sower went out to sow. And the seed fell along the roadside on stony ground, among the thorns. And he said, you know what I'm trying to tell you? I'm bringing you a mystery of the kingdom. But seeing, you're not going to see. And in hearing, you're not going to hear. So I'm going to speak my word and you will not hear it. So I will do and you will not see it. So the only thing that will come up because your hearts are so full and fat and your ears are so dull, the only thing that you will get is madness. Because you will not understand the kingdom has come upon you. The kingdom is now at hand. The kingdom is now here. So after 2,000 years, people are still trying to get mad when anybody mentions the word kingdom. Jesus said, pray let your kingdom come. Jesus said, if I cast out devils, the kingdom is upon you. He said, if you are not born from above, you cannot see the kingdom and enter the kingdom. Now, when do we want the kingdom? Oh, you're preaching kingdom. Well, that's more or less what Jesus said. If you, if you want to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, you will see and you will hear. If you don't understand the kingdom's mysteries, you will see and not see and hear and not hear. So your hearts are so full of your religious ideas that when a miracle happens, you can't see it as a miracle. And the word, the word go forth, you can't hear us as the word because you're going to sit with your stinking religion and you will not understand the kingdom. Luke 13. Verse 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Isn't it funny that it was also in a, always in a synagogue and always on the Sabbath? Jesus loved to grind the, the religious people. <laughs> and behold, there was a woman. Oh, man. Oh, now, now I need reaction. I really need reaction. I'm reading scripture upon scripture. And he was teaching and there was a woman. And he was teaching and there was a man. And he was teaching and a demon possessed. And he was teaching and a crippled. And he was teaching and a woman that was sick. So if we are teaching and there's no sick, we've got a problem with our churches. Don't send them to the hospital, bring them to church. Because when you teach, there's got to be a few sick people. That's going to listen to the teaching so that you can do. I hope I'm going to inspire a few, and a few will of course be mad, so uh, that's part of the deal by the looks of it. Let's start again, verse 10, and behold, there was a, no, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and she was bowed together, and could he no wise lift up herself, and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. He laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. The ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. So seeing, they can't see. Hearing, they can't hear. Why don't you come on another day and be healed? Verse 15. The Lord then answered him and said, You hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox and his donkey from the stall and lead him away to water? Verse 16, and ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Verse 17, and when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. I think that's more or less enough for tonight about that part of the story. So there was a group that were mad. And there was a group that rejoiced. One group gets mad, one group rejoiced. This group 
can't hear, you can't see. This group, hear and see. So I can go on chapter after chapter after chapter to try and prove tonight, but if you haven't heard now, what will it help? I read the whole life story of Jesus. The group is always made up out of hungry, thirsty people and always a few Pharisees. That's why they called them Pharisees. Everything was so far, you see. So it's too far to see, so they are Pharisees. Everything is too far to see, so they can't see and they can't hear. And that's why the other group were the sad, you see. They were so sad, you see. So the other people saw they were sad, you see. So they called sad, you see. The other group got so far to see, though, they called them Pharisees. And then, of course, they were the hungry people that saw and heard, and they always rejoiced when a miracle took place. So I hope you've seen tonight that Scripture after Scripture said, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on this, and there was a woman. And as he was teaching, there was a man. And as he was teaching, there was power. So Jesus said, if I want to talk about the kingdom, you've got to see and hear. If you can't see, there's no kingdom. And if you can't hear, there's no kingdom. So the hearing has got to be accompanied by seeing. Let's just look at the, the kingdom commandment he gave to the disciples in Matthew chapter 10. Now let's step off of Jesus' ministry to what he told his disciples. Now this is why Jesus was still on earth. In other words, he was the one that was anointed with the Holy Ghost, not the disciples. He was the one that was filled with the Holy Ghost, not the disciples. They were ordinary fishermen that functioned under his anointing. Verse number one. And Jesus summoned to him his twelve disciples and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits. What did he do? He gave them power over spirits and to heal all kinds of diseases. Now verse 7. And Jesus said, and as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons, freely have received, freely give. Come somebody help. We're going to go on and on and on. But when Jesus commanded the disciples to go out, this is what he said. Go preach. And what was the word? Preach. And this is what you have to preach. The kingdom. All people that's worried about the word kingdom. It means authority and power of Jesus Christ. Expansion of God's kingdom on earth. It says, the thing that you must preach. Now, if they had to preach that 2,000 years ago, don't you think the kingdom has come and it's time to preach the kingdom? People worried about the word kingdom now. It's not a doctrine. It's Bible. It's not a new doctrine. Jesus said, go preach. And as you preach, say the kingdom has come. And the way you preach that the kingdom has come is heal, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Cast out devils. So Jesus said, the kingdom is speaking and doing. Seeing, they won't see. Hearing, they won't hear. This is the parable of the sower. To understand the kingdom, there's got to be hearing and seeing. If these two doesn't go, there's no kingdom. That's why people suffer to understand the kingdom. But Kubas, are you now talking power? You know, it's not just about power. Isn't it funny that Jesus was always talking about power? When Gerald F. Kennedy became the prime minister, the day with his inauguration, they asked him a question. Why did you so badly want to become prime minister? He said, because it's a seed of authority. He said, what? He said, I want power. said, if I'm in the seat, I can speak with authority. So Jesus said, I give you power. Oh, don't talk power. So now Jesus was crucified. Jesus was resurrected. And in his resurrection, he appeared unto Mary. She ran away. 
when she heard it was Jesus, she didn't keep on speaking. She ran away. But then on the way, he found the Emmaus people. And this was the first discussion that really happened after his resurrection. And you know what was the very first thing they talked to him about after his resurrection? 24, Luke. You'll be shocked now. The first thing that they discussed after the resurrection of Jesus, Luke 24. And they did not know it was Jesus. Verse 18, and one of them whose name was Cleopas answered, said unto him, Are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not known the things which are come to pass in these three days? And he said to them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word. The very first discussion after his resurrection was the following. Have you not heard of Jesus of Nazareth? He was mighty in word and in deed. Verse 46, and he said unto them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Is that right? And that repentance and the remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 48, and you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So then Jesus said to them. Now I'm going to bring a comparison. Luke 24. Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20. Mark 16 verse 15 through 20. Okay. Just the three scriptures. Just a comparison there, a little table that we can draw you tonight. In Luke 24, he says, you shall be witnesses, or you are my witnesses. So go wait till you have power. So the only way you can witness is, is when you've got the power of the Holy Ghost. Stick with me. The only way you can be my witnesses is by the power of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. He said, go and teach and tell the people to do all my commandments, all that I commanded them, and I am with you. Amen. Mark 16, verse 15. Go and preach the gospel. Amen. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. This, all three incidences were on the Mount of, Olives when Jesus, Mount of Olives when Jesus entered into a cloud into heaven. So all three is the same incidence. So Luke says it. He said you shall be witnesses when you get the power. Matthew says, no, you shall go teach. Mark says, no, you must go preach and science must follow. People that see signs and wonders don't argue about signs and wonders. But have you ever heard they say, oh, that people with the signs and the wonders. Isn't it funny that it's always the people that can't do signs and wonders that talk about? While he was teaching, there was a sick man. While he was teaching, there was a cripple. While he was teaching. You can't neglect the one for the other. We do miracles all the time, but when we finish, we try and teach. We teach all the time, but after teaching, we try and do the miracles. So Acts chapter 1. Now listen, the same guy that wrote the book of Luke wrote the book of Acts. So he says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Yes. Isn't it funny that he puts it in there? <coughs> Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles, whom he had chosen. What commandments did he give the apostles? Go preach, and as you go, heal. Yeah, <laughs> Verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You shall be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit is upon you. 
Now, Jesus, when he came out of the desert, after he was tempted 40 days, he came and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach and do. So Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses. So we say, oh, that means you will, you will speak in, and people will listen. I want to make a statement. That witnessing, you've got to look at Luke 24, Mark, Matthew 28 and Mark 16. Jesus said, as you go teach and preach, as you go to be my witnesses, as you go because of the Holy Ghost, signs and wonders must accompany you. They healed a lame man at the gate called Beautiful. This is John and Peter. And after they healed the man, the Pharisee said, you're not allowed to do this. Yeah. They went back to the rest of the disciples, and this is what they prayed, verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child, Jesus. And when they had praised, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Here comes the good news. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Verse 33, and with great power gave the apostles witness. Oh God, give us boldness to speak your word by you stretching out your hand with healings, signs, and wonders. When they had prayed, the place was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, spake with boldness and with great power were they witnesses. So how did they witness? With healings, signs, and wonders. There it is. They said, Lord, give us boldness to speak with you doing. Mark chapter 16 says, and they went all over, preached the word, and the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs, wonders, and miracles. So they preached and he confirmed it with signs, wonders, and miracles. So the word must be confirmed. If there's no signs, wonders, and miracles, how can we say it's God's word? Sorry for the next explanation. But in the 1940s, there was a man in the United States of America by the name of Tommy Osborne, T.L. Osborne, who went to India for four years to preach the gospel. And every time he stood up, he said, the Bible says, and another one would stood up next to him and said, but the Quran says. Then he says, but the Bible is the word of God. Then they says, but the Quran is the word of God. For four years, he couldn't prove that the Bible was the Word of God. His life story, testimony. I spent two days with him, sat with him where he told me the life story. Got all the pictures to prove it. Said, and I preached. Prayed again, got up the next day. Said, the Word of God says. And they said, the Word of God says. But this is God's book. They said, no, this is God's book. After four years, he went back to the United States. Depressed disillusioned yeah. I thought I was going to be a missionary to India yeah. sat in his home and his wife came in with a newspaper clip said there's a man in the stadium by the name of William Branham he's got a miracle crusade he said no I know those miracle guys they you know that's that's gimmicks he said we've got nothing to lose we were four years in India yeah. we didn't prove anything we've got nothing to lose he went there, and as the miracles happened, the Spirit of God spoke to his heart and said, you can do that. Yeah. You can do that. You can. He started seeking the face of God. God met him and said, now go back to India. Uh -huh. Went back to India, and he said, the Word of God says. Yeah. And they said, the Quran says. He said, right, bring the blind. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Bring the blind. Yeah. Yeah. That's his life story. And the first one up was a priest. From their religion. And they said, well, if he doesn't see, we're going to kill you. 
And God said, don't go close to him. Just say, in Jesus' name, be healed. And he said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And the priest's eyes opened, and 70,000 Indians fell on their faces and made Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives. So uh, if we teach, Uh there must be an accompaniment. Why isn't the world running to the church? Because they don't see. And where they do see, the rest of the church prevent them from seeing because they can't prove the same. So they must find fault with the people that has got the proof. So they say, don't go there because it's not right to have miracles. Why don't you wake up and start doing miracles? When we, when we got in the ministry 24 years ago, we were up amongst the Hindu people, then the Saskai, Transkai, and then we went down to Vendorland, and amongst all those groups, they didn't know Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They worshipped all sorts of idols and gods. And they tried anything to get signs and wonders on the scene. And here comes the skinny preacher there, very skinny then. And I said, the Bible says... And I realized, hey, hey, I've got to prove something. So I said, bring the cripples tomorrow night. Bring the blind and the deaf. Do you know what? In one meeting, I baptized 600 people in Vendorland. 600 people in one meeting. Why? Because of one little girl that was crippled for 18 years that came in on her crutches and the whole township knew her. And as she came in in the tent, I said, walk straight to the front, little girl. And she came to the front, I said, throw your crutches away. And she said, I can't because I've got no bones. My bones are broken and they can't be healed. It's, it's, I'm paralyzed. She threw the crutches away. And that night she ran from house to house with her crutches to say, Jesus healed me. Do you know what? Paul says, people who preach but deny the power, get away from such people. They got a form of godliness but deny the power. Depart from such people. So Paul says, it's time to get power hungry. If there's no witnessing, what is witnessing? The signs. Acts chapter 2, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I said, the Holy Ghost is there so that you can preach and do. The Holy Ghost is there so that you can teach and do. You've got to be able to do. You, everyone in this house, you can go out here tonight and teach and do. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were one accord in one place. All of a sudden, rushing, mighty wind, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And Peter stood up and preached, verse 22. You men of Israel, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, A man accredited, pointed out, shown forth, commended and attested to you by God, by the mighty works and the power of performing wonders and signs which God's worked through him in your midst, as you yourself know. This Jesus, when delivered up to be to the definite and fixed purpose and settled plan of the foreknowledge of God, you crucified. Uh Verse 32, this Jesus hath God raised up, and we are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. Romans chapter 15. Verse 15. Still on some points I have written to you the more boldly and unreservedly by way of reminder. Oh man, this is going to be great. I wish I had more place on the board. Because of the grace bestowed on me by God, in making me a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, I act in the priestly service of the gospel of God, in order that the sacrificial offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, consecrated, and made holy by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have legitimate reason to glory in my work for God. For I will not venture to speak thus, of any work except what Christ has actually done through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed. Verse 19, even as my preaching has been accompanied with the power of signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
I have fully preached the gospel, carrying out the full good news of Christ in its entirety. Paul says, by the grace of God, I preach the gospel, the full gospel in its entirety. And it's entire because there was preaching plus signs and wonders. So if it's just preaching, it's half a gospel. If it's just miracles, it's half a gospel. So Paul says when we gather, we can't just be around miracles and we can't just be around the Word. He says when I preach, it's always accompanied by signs, wonders, and miracles. So he says that's the entire gospel. That is called the full gospel. Come on, church. This is Paul, man. Smith Wigglesworth, we like his life story. Just before he died, he visited South Africa. And he was in the office in the AFM church with one of the Duplessis brothers, Justice and what was the other one? David Duplessis. It's in their offices, and this is what he said. He said, God has showed me. This is in his, in his book. God has showed me there's going to come a great revival of the Spirit. And they called it the Healing Revival, 1946 through 1965. Then there's going to be a great revival of the Word from 1967. So now we've got the faith people teaching the Word, the Word, the Word. Speak the Word, live in the Word, get the Word. He says, but then there'll come a revival of the Spirit and the Word. It says, and where people will teach and do, it'll be the greatest revival the world has ever seen. Acts chapter 8. Verse 5. Philip the deacon <laughs> went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. And great crowds of people with one accord listened to and heeded what was said by Philip as they heard him and watched the miracles and wonders which he kept performing. How were multitudes coming to Jesus? Because they heard Philip teaching and they watched the miracles that he did. Verse 8, and there was great joy in the city. So some are glad and some are, man. Who's got the joy? The people that love to see and hear. Who lost their joy? Can't see, can't hear. So they get the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the cannot sees. Matthew 11 first. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. He departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said, Are you he that should come or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said, Go show John. Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. Amplified, go report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive the sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. Deaf hear. Dead are raised. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Come somebody. As he was teaching and preaching, John heard it and he sent disciples and said, Are you the one? He said, Go tell John again what you see and hear. Jesus said, you get the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He didn't say, you get the power when you fast 40 days. He didn't say that you get the power when you leave your golf cues. He didn't say you get the power when you stop fishing. He didn't say you get the power when you get legalistic and put all your followers in legalism. I want to repeat that. Jesus didn't say you get the power by writing a book on how you got the power. Isn't it funny that most people that did miracles... Their followers couldn't do miracles. Because 
after doing miracles, we always want to put a coin on the fact that we can do miracles. So you want to put the people in bondage that I sought God for seven years. But if you want to be honest, you could have done it the first day you got the Holy Ghost. Now I see people coming. But I can go to my bookshelf and take you out books. Seven steps to God's miracle power. Six steps how you can perform miracles. I say, how did you do miracles? By the grace of God. What made you what you are? The grace of God. Because didn't you do something? I accepted the grace of God. Don't wait for another extra supernatural meeting. Go and lay hands on the sick and get them recovered. But if you don't want to lay hands on the sick, go speak to the poor. If you don't want to speak to the poor, go drive out devils. But just do something. Maybe you should prophesy. Just do something. Amen. John 3. Now there was a certain man among the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler among the Jews, who came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know and are certain that you are come from God as a teacher. As a teacher. For no one can do these signs, wonder works, and miracles if God is not with him. Praise the Lord. Hmm? Yes. Rabbi, we know and are certain that you are a teacher. For no one can do these signs, wonders, and miracles. Oh, God has called me as a teacher of the word. Where's the wonders? Now, I'm a teacher. Where's the signs and the miracles? Hey, guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content. And we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.